Hello, we are on the air. I'm Frank Clark, and I'm here with Armand Warren, entrepreneur, speaker, author, expert, internet millionaire. <laughs> and uh, today, I uh, just thought we'd have a, a conversation about Armand, something, some um, discussion about your, your history, how you came to build the business that you did, and uh, some of the things that you did along the way. So maybe we could uh, start off the same uh, discussion of, you know, how you got interested in, in internet marketing and, and got involved in this business. Okay, sounds good. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. I always had a lot of fun. And uh, let's just kind of start the beginning. You know, I started online way back when basically there was nothing. You, you, your sound is just a little bit uh, funky. Thank you. It's yeah. dry, you hear uh, some scratchiness or something. Hold on, this is dry. When I mute mine, nothing. Ah, there we go. What was that? No. Fixed for a minute and it's back. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just going to refresh the page, okay? Um. It was beautiful just a moment ago. I'm going to refresh the page. Oh, uh, yeah. I apologize. That's a little bit of uh, technical difficulties here. I'm just going to give us a call back in. There you are. Okay. So, oh, so much better. Thank you. For so that. much better, right? <laughs> you know, what happens is uh, sometimes you, you're you playing around. And, you know, it's like you've got these different microphones. you got the microphone on the webcam. i got another microphone yes. sitting on here. i got a microphone sitting on this. You know, it's like... Which microphone's using what? So. Yeah, just before I called in, I was testing my my equipment and I couldn't get it to work, and I was panicking a little bit because I'm like, ah, <laughs> I got this interview starting and nothing's working. That's right. Well, I let's uh, let's uh, you know, let's go back and let's start a little bit as far as uh, you know, the question was, you know, what? Uh, how did I get started on this whole internet thing? Well, way back in 1996, uh, I got started online. Now, uh, the circumstances were kind of interesting because I just started my first company. Yeah, you have to think about this. 1995, I started my first company. Uh, it was a long distance company, believe it or not. I actually wanted to compete with AT&T, MCI, yeah. and Sprint. Uh, and it was kind of cool. We we did this whole thing. And uh, I ended up selling the company for $1.8 uh, million. Well, actually, I, we built the company to $1.8 million. Then we ended up selling it for a bunch of stock, which uh, to make a long story short, is not a good idea. So <laughs> that same stock today is worth about 75 cents. So right. we don't want, we don't yeah, really unless you're selling it to uh, you know, a well-established company like Apple or something like that, where the stock yeah, you know, not, is going to be valuable. Yeah. Not happening. So, uh, so <laughs> anyway, so there I was, uh, you know, I had to sold this company. I had no money coming in and I kept two things from my, uh, from my company. I had uh, my desk and I had my computer. And the one thing that people kept on uh, talking about and everybody, in fact, Bill Gates said, if your business is not on the internet, your business is going to be out of business. That's what he said. And so I thought this guy's like the richest man in the world. So he, he's got to know something, right? Right, right. right. So, uh, so I said, okay, let's just jump on. So I did like everyone else did. I found one of those discs at the time that was being shot around by AOL. Sure. And I, I, <laughs> I, plugged got, it in. I got hundreds of those. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you use them for like, you know, for drink holders and everything else. And, exactly. <laughs> but we had all these discs. And so I finally popped one in and, and I got online and, and someone told me, uh, you know, that's not AOL, that's not the internet. And I'm like, what do you mean? Said, that's AOL. That's not the internet. I'm like, okay, well, how do I get on the internet? And they said, well, you need this. And so I, I then, got another disc from CompuServe and I jumped on that. And then I got another disc from, I think it was mine something and another disc from this company, that company. I had like four internet services. And finally someone told me, you got to click that little E on your computer. That's the internet and meaning internet explorer. And I'm like, well, what do you do? They said, well, you go online and you search for stuff. I'm like, search for stuff. No one's going to do this. This is idiotic. This is crazy. This is ridiculous. This thing's going to fail, right? <laughs> so I then jumped online real quick and I started searching for stuff. Uh, really, probably the most stupid things you could imagine, like uh, is Elvis alive and uh, are there aliens and all that good stuff. <laughs> but I found one thing. I found uh, one thing in the first couple hours. 
uh, that I was online. And that was I found one of my competitors in the long distance industry had uh, had a website and they were selling their long distance service online. And I'm like, you can sell stuff. So this is awesome. This is incredible. Uh, and then I kept searching. I kept searching and searching. And, and I eventually I found this one little website. And this one little website said, if you give me $20, I will put a link on my website to your website. And uh, because I'm going to advertise my website, you're going to get traffic to your website. And I thought, well, that's a simple idea. I, I thought, you know, I could probably do something like that. So I found this little program on AOL and AOL had this program called AOL Press. And what it was, it was this program that said, if you followed these instructions in a couple hours, you would have your own website. So I am extremely naive. A lot of people don't know this, but I am. And so what I did was I went on and I followed their instructions to a T. And in two hours, I had my own website. My website said this. I am going to advertise this website an awful lot. And if you give me 20 bucks, I will uh, get traffic. To That's brilliant. Website. Where did you think of that? I know. I know. So now I, I saw these classified sites online on AOL particularly, and they had these little groups and you could run an ad. And so I, I did that. I ran these little ads to these little groups and all of a sudden people would give me and pay me to put the link to their, my web, their website on my website. Now, here's the thing you have to understand though. I didn't have a domain. The website that I had was members.aol.com right. slash some funky name slash sure. some funky name slash some funky name. <laughs> and, uh, this now, before Bitly, so but it gets <laughs> even better. saw what you had. <laughs> now it gets even better though. Remember, this is day one, day one. So now the one thing, I, other thing I kept from my company is we had this software program, which basically said, if you give me your check routing number, your bank account number and a check number, I could print out a check and I could take it to the bank without your signature. That's actually a legal thing, believe it or not. And so I had these people on an unsecure website, on a website on AOL actually do that. Not just a few, but within that first eight, uh, first seven days, I should say, we brought in $8,000. Oh, that's incredible. Now think about that at 20, you know, 20, I think it was $25 actually, $25 a pop, $8,000. That's a lot of links on a website. That's I would actually that. be making all these links one at a time on the website. And I had one of the girls that used to work for me when I had my company come in at night to type up all these checks. <laughs> and, and that's how I did it. it. That's, that was the very first thing that I ever did online. But, but here's the point though, for everyone listening, obviously that's not a very viable opportunity right now, but, uh, but here's the thing is think of the circumstances that people have today. Things are a whole lot easier today than they were back in 1996 when I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what was happening. I had no idea what um, really any of this, this stuff was. So uh, today there's, there's just so much more opportunity and there's so much easier ways. There's things like WordPress, there's uh, information, there's people like me and many others that have already gone before us and, and, Basically, we have a bunch of arrows in our backs. <laughs> Great. So how did you go, go back even before that? Go back to, you know, what, what made you want to start businesses? You mentioned the, uh, that you were competing with ATT in the, uh, in, in the um, long distance service. Like what yeah. was sort of your first entrepreneurial um, experience, if you will? You know, maybe going back as a kid. Yeah, when I was a kid, um, you know, uh, here's a good one. I got one of those letters in the mail. I, I subscribed to all these magazines. Uh, first of all, my my dad tried all kinds of things, you know, growing up. And so uh, you had the background from watching your dad try to. Yeah, except my dad didn't succeed at any of those things that he tried. <laughs> one or two, he did, but uh, he taught me more or less that you need to try. That that's really was yes. the was the whole that's, thing. Is that's I, good I luck. Saw, I saw him try different things. I saw him try this thing called Merlite jewelry. Um, where it was this little tiny catalog. It was kind of the cool thing. It was uh, uh, this costume jewelry and he would have this case of jewelry and open it up and people would buy jewelry from him actually. Uh, he tried, and this was like all side businesses because he had an actual job working at an aluminum factory, uh, which you know wasn't great. It was a good job, don't get me wrong, but it was 
you know, wasn't what he really wanted to do with his life. Uh, so then he tried things like Amway. I saw sure. you know, him, him and my mom try Amway and, uh, and that was great and that was fine. And they get to meet a lot of fantastic and great people. And I learned a lot just by watching the, and observing, uh, what was happening with their Amway and Amway meetings and things of that nature. And I met a lot of fantastic people as well, too. In fact, it was a great story is that in, uh, 1989, believe it or not, um, at that an Amway meeting in Reston, Virginia, uh, Re Les Brown. I saw two people speak: Charles Tremendous Jones and Les Brown. Nice. That, oh that wow, was that's a fantastic lineup. Yeah, yeah. So Charles Tremendous Jones is amazing, man. Great yeah, I read his enjoy. book and Les's as well. I've seen Les, but never Charles. Well, in uh, a few years ago, in uh, 2010, uh, I actually had Les speak at my event. Um, I actually nice. ha actually Les has come to my own speaker trainings to learn how to sell from the stage, which is pretty awesome. Fantastic. That's and, great. And, Good and for you. Kudos. Be, yeah, we just got to be great friends over the years. Uh, and uh, it was just one of those things where life comes full circle. But the point being is way back then, you know, I, I just tried different things, uh, you know, to you know, to try to do something. I knew that I wasn't cut out. I wanted to be a stockbroker because I think that was what I was supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to have this idea of what you want to do. Uh, but but that's not what, you know, I think I really intended to do. When I went to college, I spent all my time in the library learning about real estate, even though to this day I haven't really done any real estate except buying my own houses. Right. Uh, but I spent a lot of time figuring out a lot of things about real estate and reading a lot of books on entrepreneurialism. One of the first books I read when I went to college, oddly enough, the very first month, was a book that one of my teachers re uh, recommended. It was a book called Think and Grow Rich. Fantastic first book. Yeah, it was a, a great book that I read. And, uh, you know, I've read it multiple times since then. But it was th that type of training, that type of information that kind of got me, you know, to realize that there's something more. There's yeah. something else out there. And I think that's what a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs have is that you may not know exactly what it is that life is set out for you, uh, but you know that there's something better than what you have right now. And and I think so much of our life, we go through that that time to figure out what that is. What is it that, you know, we're intended to set upon this earth to ultimately do? Right. You mentioned actually, you know, when, uh, you first got on the internet that, um, you know, the guy told you, well, just go on to the explore and, and, and search for stuff. But yeah. in a sense, that's a great metaphor for kind of okay. your path and, and, and in a sense, everybody's path, because that's what we're all doing. We're all searching. And I right. love the, the mention of Amway. Actually, I'd been exposed to Amway early on. A friend had turned me on to it. I went, went to a few meetings, never got that into it. But sure. what I loved about the organization is they had yeah. great education and training where they recommended great books, they sold great books, they brought out great speakers, and they exposed people who had no business experience to fantastic mentorship through books like yeah. some of the ones that you've mentioned or speakers like Les and Charles Tremendous Jones. Or Yeah, do you know, do you know th one of the uh, uh, the uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad books? Yeah, with Robert, Robert Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki, yeah. What happened was uh, that book was a failure when it initially came out. And uh, happened to be Dexter Yeager, one of the top people in Amway. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know, I know happened Dexter. to come upon that book while he was on vacation in Florida. Read the book, thought it was fantastic, and recommended it to all of his diamonds in his Amway organization. <laughs> That's actually how the book got started. I was just reading. I was uh, getting a haircut yesterday. And, and oddly, the, the barber had a copy of The Alchemist, one of my favorite books by yeah. Paul Coelho. And I picked it up, and it was the 25th anniversary edition. And it was the same kind of a story where... When the book came out, you know, it sold one copy and then six months later it sold another copy. Right? Well, you know, the, you, know the, you know, the original title of a Think and Grow Rich was Make Oodles with Your Noodle. <laughs> no lie. That, that's the honest to God's truth. <laughs> that was when they went to print, Napoleon Hill wanted to call it Make Oodles with Your Noodle. And, and that that's was hysterical. the original. Yeah, that was the original title. And then <laughs> what happened was the, 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 the publisher said, no way. <laughs> We're not putting that. And then they, I don't know who decided to change it, but someone came up with the idea of think and grow rich. And, you know, the rest is history, of course. Right. Clearly. Oh, that's, that, that, that's an awesome story. So um, take us back now to the early days on the internet and how you went from posting links for $25 to <laughs> developing some of the other businesses that you Well, you know, one of the things I became uh, really enthralled with about the internet, it was, um, I think like many people, it's like this information overload, uh, is I, I found, I'd find things and I would spend days. I mean, I would literally have a pizza box 
and uh, a, a bottle of Mountain Dew <laughs> and just keep on going for days on end because I was an information junkie. I, I, I got addicted. I was uh, totally obsessed. Uh, so what happened was I would find all these different tools and cool things that I thought was cool at least. And what I would do is I would bookmark them and I would organize these bookmarks and I just save them. And so one day I, I just came upon this one idea and I don't know what made me think about it, but I thought, you know what? If I think that these bookmarks are cool, I bet you that a lot of other people would think they're cool too. Maybe I should sell the bookmarks to my bookmarks. And so I made, uh, now this was before anyone ever even thought of creating a membership. This is, we're talking like 96, early 1997. Um, what happened was no, no one ever thought about making really membership sites or anything back then. So I took my bookmarks, I organized them into a few web pages, uh, did it by hand, uh, and then put this uh, online and I charged people. And I, my sales letter, I remember it was two paragraphs. It was uh, the problem. This is how it said, the problem <laughs> and that is a paragraph. <laughs> and then it said the solution. And then that was the second paragraph. <laughs> Uh, and that was so your first your first run of copywriting there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was okay, but it was kind of. And then I had a second page. I actually had two pages. The second page kind of gave them an idea of all the different things that I had inside this this members area. So I charged people one hundred and ten dollars, and I crossed my fingers and pushed it out and advertised on some of the sites that I was advertising in. And and that was kind of a, a hint for everybody is that if you think about this, everything I've said so far, I said advertise. I didn't depend upon free yes. traffic or anything like that. I actually bought advertising, paid for it, uh, and even from the very, very start. Now, here's what happened. In the first day or so, I, I got like 10 orders. And I'm like, this is awesome. I had 10 people <laughs> pay me 110 I made like $1,000 or so. Uh, and I thought, this is amazing. This is fantastic. So then I said, well, hmm, you know, let's advertise this a little bit more. So then, you know, next couple of days, all of a sudden I had like a thousand orders, right? And now, now think about this, a thousand orders at $110 a piece. This is in seven days, okay? In the first seven days, a thousand orders. Think about this. So it's $100,000 that I brought in, you know, sitting in this one room studio apartment that, uh, you know, that I had. And I'm going, oh my gosh, what, what is going on here? So then all of a sudden- Yeah, that's a game changer for you, I'm sure. It started Changed going crazy. Life. Yeah, it started going crazy at this point because now all of a sudden, it, 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 you ever watch that UPS commercial where it, it's like they get one order, they're like, yay. They get two orders, they're like, yay. And then all of a sudden it starts going really, really fast. And they start getting all these, and they're like, no, no, no. Like, well, oh no. That's where I was. <laughs> because all of a sudden, I started getting phone calls from my server company. They're like, oh, you're crashing our servers left and right. What is going on? And so they moved me from my shared hosting account to my dedicated hosting account till I was crashing servers left and right till I went from one server to two servers to three servers to four servers to five servers, all on a RAID 10 backup system and all this other crazy stuff. And, and, and here's what happened is over the course of the next 12 weeks, I ended up selling over 35,000 people these bookmarks at 110 bucks. Now, now think about this. I sold something that I got for free and I sold people on the convenience. Now, a lot of people say, how could you in good conscience actually sell someone your bookmarks? I said, let me ask you a question. Um, did you ever buy an encyclopedia or look at an encyclopedia? All the information in an encyclopedia is actually free. What you're paying for is you're paying for the convenience of having it all in one place. Right. And somebody did the work for exactly. you. Exactly. And that's exactly what I what I how I explain it to people. So the reason why I ended in 12 weeks, and this is really the start, and this is you have to listen very closely to what happened, is I have this phone call and it said, Mr. Morin, we are your merchant account company and um, we've seen that you've processed, you know, you know, $4.2 million. And very proudly, I'm like, yes, I have. I have processed that much money. <laughs> and, and they said, yeah, you processed too much money in too short a period of time. And we feel uncomfortable because what if all these people should cancel at the same time? They didn't know. Now, this is no one ever done a product launch. No one ever did this much money, not just in the internet marketing industry, anywhere on the whole internet period, because this is before e-commerce. This is before Amazon. This is before Google. This is before. So I'm like, this is like totally new ground. 
And this merchant account company's freaking out on me. And so they shut down my merchant account. Not only did they shut down my merchant account, they went into my bank account and took out $2.1 million. Now I had uh, an affiliate program at the time. I had one of the first affiliate programs anywhere on the internet and I paid out my affiliates. That's one thing I always do is pay your bills. Uh, the second thing is they took out the other half. So I just processed $4.2 million. And, and guess what happened is uh, I, I have now uh, zero money. <laughs> now, now think about this. This is like the, the best and the worst things that could possibly ever happen to you uh, happen. So you, you just succeeded beyond belief. But then at the same time, you are now stuck with nothing. So uh, that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Um, and now we just, I think we just lost. We just, we just lost Frank, but I'm going to keep on going. He's going to come back. There we go. You're back. <laughs> so, so again, it was the greatest thing and the worst thing that ever happened to me. Now, the reason why I say that is because uh, I was put into a situation. I just was on track to do $155 million worth of sales that year. Can you um, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Frank, you there? I hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. So Frank's having a little bit of an issue, but we're going to keep on going. So now again, I was ready to do $155 million that year. Can you hear year. me now? I can hear you. Can you hear Sorry me? That. <laughs> no, no problem. Technical challenges. <laughs> we just kept on going. It's okay. All right, good. Thank you for uh, keeping it going there. <laughs> but what happened uh, is, again, we, we got my merchant account taken away. Um, most people would be very upset. And I was. I was extremely upset uh, because I was on track, like I said, to do $155 million worth of sales that year. Um, and now all of a sudden, wow. I, can't, I can't process any money. Now, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. Now, now think about this, though where a lot of people would just be stuck. And, and I was upset, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> but uh, I had to figure out how to process. So I, I went searching, I went researching to find out how- Get back to the search. Yeah, how could I process credit cards or process sales online without a merchant account? Because now I'm blackballed because no one would accept me at that time. Because you're so, doing too much business. Too much business, which There's is the technology ridiculous. that was available. I get penalized because I'm too successful. That I mean, that's right. crazy. So that is, that's insane. Uh, so I ended up uh, doing a bunch of research, and I found there's about 70 to 80 companies at the time that would allow you to use their merchant account. Very similar to like ClickBank does today. Very okay. similar to like you know PayPal does in a roundabout way. Very similar to many other companies, except there weren't these companies that existed back then. So, uh, but I, I I found out that other people could uh, would want the same information. So what I did was I decided I was going to put this into an ebook, and uh, I started putting together this ebook. But in order to make the ebook, I needed some ebook software, and I bought all this ebook software that existed at the time. And ebooks were a lot different back then; they weren't sure. a, a PDF; they were uh, a compiled set of HTML pages wrapped in a, a software. That's what it was. <laughs> it was very very complicated. Uh, yeah, the technology's come a long way, obviously, in the last yeah years. And it, it was it was much more interactive than what ebooks are today. So what year still, is this for, for reference? Probably roughly. about 1998. 98. Okay. Yeah. So we're deep into the internet uh, web revolution. All the all the dot coms are going crazy at this point. Yeah. So I decided that you know none of the software is easy to use, but if someone could create an easy piece of software to use that uh, did all the good things and didn't do all the bad things, it'd probably make a million dollars. And so then I had that one question: Well, why not me? And that's except, a great question. Except for the fact that I, I can't program, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I searched and searched the internet and I found this company in Czechoslovakia to make me this piece of software. I took the last bit of money that I had and I just pumped it in and I said, okay, let's do this. Let's make this software. Uh, and so now I have this ebook and I have the software. And so I'm, I'm selling this ebook for $19.97 and I am extremely happy. Uh, now that ebook, now that I made way back when, I, I actually only took it off the market about five, six years ago. Okay, so now we had this ebook for years and years and years, and uh, that ebook every single year with the original sales letter, mind you, uh, did about thirty thousand dollars a year. Nice. It was amazing. It was the most amazing thing. <laughs> it's, it's just once you have a need uh, that the market wants, it's it's easy to 
to, to, to sell the product. And so we, I never changed a sales letter, sales letter worked. Why would I? So I didn't forget it. And, you know, it just ran for 15 years and generated yeah. over half a million dollars. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. That's awesome. And so that, now that software was a software that eventually, uh, the name of the software, uh, I, I couldn't think of a good name for it. So I called it ebook generator. And that was the software which became the number one ebook software in the world uh, wow. for, for, for it. So now as I created that software, another thing that happened was, I did all, now remember, remember I told you I made my own websites. I made my own graphics along with that, mind you. Uh, so I uh, created these header graphics for my website and people started asking me, how did you make those header graphics on your website? <laughs> and, and I thought, hey. you know, if someone could make a piece of software that made those graphics, that'd be kind of cool. Right. And so, uh, so I, I set out and I found another guy to make that software. Uh, again, I didn't know how to program. But we already talked sure. about that. But you were so, resourceful and you knew to ask and, and yeah. find a team that could support you and, and build and grow your, you know, toward your vision. Exactly. And so I found another guy who made that software and I created a product called Header Generator. And because I figured, why not just name it Generator? It's easy. And sure, then now I you've it. got your trademark. Now I have Header Generator, PDF Generator, Instant PDF Generator, Audio Generator. Anything that ends with Generator that's software related was mine. Right, so <laughs> and, keep your brand. And so we created about 30 to 40 different pieces of software that powered the majority of the internet. Um, anybody wow. in the marketing space actually utilize that software. Our business grew to where we were doing, you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year. Um, and just from software and things. And but eventually then then people start asking me, how'd you do it? That was the right. question. So I just I, I want to comment on a question here. I'll just put that yeah. in. Are you saying you have a million dollars in cash or assets? Well, I think uh, he was doing ten, tens of millions of dollars a year for, for years. He's probably got you know, at <laughs> yeah, least let's, assets. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> yeah, let's let's put it this way. The house that I'm sitting in right now is uh, 17,500 square feet. Nice. Um, we do, uh, you know, like I said, you know, our businesses, uh, my businesses now have generated over, well, I stopped counting at $100 million. We've done probably cl about $200 million in total sales. Fantastic. Uh, on, online. So now, now that's a combination of things uh, of different companies that I've created, different software that we've created, coaching programs that we've created, um, and 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 all those things combined. It didn't happen overnight, you know. Now right. think about now. Just think about this for a second, Frank. Is that we next year is 2016. Um, 2016. That is going to be my 20th year. I was just saying, yeah, 20 year Actually, anniversary. 20 year anniversary on the internet, which is really kind of cool. That is cool, uh, yeah. Something very few people, there's only one or two of my friends I know that can actually say that, uh, which is which is pretty awesome. So we're pretty happy. We've accomplished a lot, but more so than that, now, uh, you know, a lot of my time is spent helping people uh, build their businesses, you know, doing what they, I still do the research. I still, you know, do, I still market my own products online. I still create my own products. I still create things that I love. That's the challenge for me. I, I like to create new things. I like to discover things other people haven't done. For example, you know, the other day, literally two days ago, I created a new campaign on, uh, on, on Google and people saying that you can't get inexpensive clicks on Google. Well, I don't know the campaign I created two days ago, I'm getting 12 cent clicks right now. And, uh, and it's awesome. It's, it's incredible. Uh, and so it's just figuring out how to utilize the systems to the best of your ability in order to make it work. And then teaching now, I, again, teach a lot of other people to do the same. So I want to comment on a question that's that's here from D753. He says, uh, I have no money. I'm a barber. I'd love to start my own shop, which is only about 4,000 British pounds. Might yeah. as well be 4 million because I've got four children. And uh, what do we want to make a week feeds and close us some hard work open to suggestions and have no way of getting a loan as I've always dealt in cash, hence no credit score. So can't get a loan. Any advice would be helpful. So because you, you just brought uh, this up of how you've been educating people on the internet. Now I, I want to bring to bear a, a yeah. friend of mine here in New York who was also a hairdresser yeah. and struggling to get by. And what she decided to do with a little bit of coaching, she got some help from a mentor was start teaching haircutting through, uh, you know, like a group coaching type of a setting, but certainly that's something that you can do online. So maybe you can address that with, uh, for D753, what would you advise or recommend how he can start, um, you know, start some so, kind of an internet business to better support his family? Well, let's put it this way. I mean, well, his objective is he wanted to start an actual physical business, correct? Yeah, he wanted to start a barbershop, but to get there, he, he's saying he can't get a loan. Maybe it's a fat, 
you, you know, you and I know there's a faster way of getting that money than going to a bank and trying to get a loan, start a business online that, you know, can, well, can you know, that's, you what, to. that's what a lot of people would do. A lot of people would say, and, uh, uh, and I'm actually going to go in the opposite direction. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the reason why I say that is because, you know, this particular individual, uh, you know, wants to start a, a barber, uh, you know, shop and um, probably doesn't know a lot about the internet. So uh, for him to try to do something from scratch on the internet, yeah, I mean, I would, you know, you could do a number of different things, but, uh, but more so is uh, what can he do offline in order to generate 4,000 pounds, okay? Which is, you know, like you said, it feels like 4 million pounds to him at this particular point. Right. So the first question would be, number one, uh, you know, are you gonna do it one, one at a time? You know, one haircut at a time? Probably not, not gonna happen. Uh, so the, then the question is, okay, can you trade something out? Meaning, uh, can you teach someone? And again, you use the great example about teaching people in a group setting how to cut hair. Um, you know, for example, that now that would be a, a great scenario. So, for example, let's say you went to your local library as an example, um, and you know any adult education classes that might have. And let's say you set up an adult education class teaching people how to start cutting hair. Um, the question then would be. Could you teach people how to become a licensed hair person? Okay, is there a qualification? Is there a school? Is there something that you could do in order to make that happen? Um, so you might charge people, for example, a hundred pounds in order to make that happen. Uh, let's say in order to prepare or uh, educate themselves in order to take the hair cutting exam, so to say. So that might be a hundred dollar, hundred pounds. You need forty people in order to make that happen. You see what I mean? Exactly. So you know, or uh, again, if you because yeah, yeah, we're talking about cutting and hair. That 40 so. people doesn't have to be at once. You could do a group of right. five and spread by word of mouth and maybe you get up to like 10 right. the next time and you do three groups, of, three right. more groups of 10 and there's your 4,000 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I have a nanny and she, you know, she was doing these workshops at $100 a piece. And, uh, you know, there was, she, was on, she wasn't getting a huge number of people, but she was getting 10 to 15 people, you know, at like I think it was 100 bucks a piece that she was charging in order to do this. And she was doing them at the local... Um, it's like, a, it's like a, almost like a gym <laughs> and, uh, right. but she found a room there that was affordable. It's like 20 or 30 bucks that she could actually hold these little classes in. And that's why she did it. Fantastic. But I mean, you're saying it's not generating a lot of money, but to her, you know, 10 bucks a head at a hundred dollars for, well, for to her, three hours of work. That's thousand dollars for three hours is probably that more than correct. She's making as a nanny. Correct. You know? So for you figure for a couple hours, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Not everybody has to be an internet millionaire. You can make a couple thousand dollars and right. have it be a game changer. And I'm going to tell you right so. now, the biggest, you know, I, I've made a lot of money. Okay. Let's just throw that out there. <laughs> okay. But <Right. laughs> the money that I'm, that I'm most uh, proud of, the, mon the money that I can remember the most, the, 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 the dollars that come to my mind the most, if you ask me the, the ones that I was most excited about was the very first sale I ever got for $19.97 selling that ebook on how to take credit cards without a merchant account. I can tell you exactly where I was to this very day. I can tell you what I said to my wife. I, and she couldn't understand. Now, now think about this for a moment. I had just done $4.2 million online, right? And all of a sudden, I get this sale for a $19.97 ebook, and I am jumping up and down. I am so excited about that. And she's like, She's like, I, why are you so excited? I was like, you don't understand. I created this ebook and someone bought it and they don't even know me. <laughs> <laughs> and if I can sell one person, I can right. sell thousands right. of it's people. Scalable. And that's exactly, and that's why I was so excited about it because at that point, it just kind of, it hit me. It, it really hit me and I was so excited, but I can remember that more than anything else possible. Uh, and you start off small. I mean, you start off small. I mean, I start new businesses all the time. And uh, I'm, I don't look to try to make a killing right off the bat. I look to just get my first sale. If I can get my first sale. Exactly. And figure out how you do the it. Then you know what you have to do to scale to, you know, you then you buy advertising because, you know, people have done it before. If you can exactly. buy advertising for less than the cost of the product. Right. And, and let me, let me um, give everyone an idea. So, so let's say that you have an idea. Okay. Uh, what a lot of people will do is spend months and months and months trying to build this product, create this service. And then sometimes in the end, discover that it's just not working. Well, instead of taking all that time, why not just build a simple opt-in page and ask people, uh, would you be interested in this idea? And if you are, send them your first name, your email address, and then hit subscribe. And basically, you're asking people to kind of vote 
And if you get enough people to vote, then what happens is now that's a good idea that you should probably pursue. But now it doesn't cost you anything. You can do that in an hour, 30 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on how good you are. Uh, or you can get somebody to do it for you. I mean, if it's bucks. not your core strength, like our, our barber yeah. friend here, then you can, there's, there are plenty of people. You can go on a site like Fiverr.com or Elance and find somebody who can build a squeeze page. If you have absolutely no skills, just like you were saying earlier, you had no software skills, you were not a programmer but you found somebody somehow through CompuServe in Czechoslovakia, next thing you know, you're in the software business. Exactly. So you don't need to have any technical skills to build a web-based business. You know, you know, and that's the, that's the mistake that a lot of people have is that, um, you know, I do, you know, I still do my own website to work. I still do my own graphics. I still do all my other stuff. And I could hire anyone I wanted to do these uh, these things. But right? you, you developed it as a core competency and maybe you like to do it a little bit. I do. I mean, I like to do it and I'm actually pretty good at it. <laughs> so <laughs> after 20 years, you get good at things. And so I discovered that I'm the best person to do that job. If I wasn't the best person to do that job, uh, I wouldn't do it. Uh, right. if, I wasn't, if I wasn't the fastest person to do that job, then I wouldn't do it. And, uh, you know, for me, it's taking my concept, what's in my head and trying to put it down on a website. And I have a process that I use. I turn it into a graphic first, and then I take that graphic and I basically build it out. Um, and so, you know, it's just the way that I do things, but do I think that everyone should do it the way I do it? Do I think that you or anyone else watching this should create their own website? The answer is no, because that's going to hold you back. That's a reason for you to, to, that's a reason for you to fail. Quite honestly, is that, oh, I can't succeed because I'm not technically oriented. The majority of people online are not technically oriented. You know, Steve Jobs, who is one of the, in my opinion, one of the, just the greatest geniuses that ever lived. Yeah, brilliant. You, you know, didn't make every part of a computer. <laughs> he he didn't know everything there was right. to know about it. He he managed a lot of it. He micromanaged a lot of it. Yes, but well, was that was a techie t- from the beginning too. Steve Wozniak, I think, was more the engineering uh, person than than Steve. Right. Exactly. Steve Jobs. Right? But he had the vision as far as where he wanted to take it. He was the right. So the vision is the critically important piece. If you've got the vision, you'll find the resources, you'll find the people, you'll find the technology. It's just that, it's just that you know, what the way that we're trained as individuals, and it's sad that we're trained this way, but from the very young age, uh, we're trained to try to do things ourselves. We're trained to go to school to learn how to do a, a particular function. Uh, we're, you know, in high school, we're taught to do certain things and have a certain skill level. And then we're taught to go to college or a trade school and learn a certain skill. We're taught to go out in life and do things ourselves. But now all of a sudden you have someone like me or you or telling other people saying, Hey, you should get someone else to do that. It's, right. it's a, it's a contradicting thought that how do I do that? And sh- if I have someone else do that, I'm going to, it's going to cost me a lot of money. And, and that's the process that, and that's kind of the contradiction that happens in people's minds. So what happens is they have to start small. So, you know, uh, you know, and let me give you guys an idea. In the last couple of days, I've, I've created probably four or five different ads on Google, Bing, uh, and Facebook. Okay. I've, uh, I've put out to have another piece of software, oddly enough, developed on, on freelancer.com. Um, you know, we, and, and, and all the, and I, I've made probably two websites in the last few days as well too. And, and this is just me casually working. This wasn't me working hard. This was me just casually working. Sure. So the, the point that I'm trying to make though, is that if you want to get things done, it's understanding the process. The only reason that you're not getting the things done that you want to get done is just because no one has explained it to you in the right way in order to get it done. Does that make sense? Uh, absolutely. And I know, I mean, this is probably a good time to, to mention, introduce the the work that you do in um, training people on coming up to speed quickly, including the, what is it, WebCamp that's a, a yeah. free service you provide yeah, for you getting know, we, people up to speed on the technical skills. So many times people have, uh, you know, have always said, I've, I've heard this so many times over the years, well, if you're so good at what you do, why don't you just teach me for free? And one day I thought about it and said, okay, let's do it. So two years ago, I started doing these web camps uh, and they're full three day live streaming seminar. And the room in back of me on the other side of this wall is a complete training center. I can actually, I do seminars in my house with up to 50 people. And nice. uh, so, but in that room also, it's designed to stream. I have cameras and lighting, the whole works. 
And what we do is we stream me live, 100% live, uh, for three full days, not just not for an hour or something like that, but three full days and you see me and you see my computer and I teach a specific subject for three full days. Now, for example, our next web camp happens to be on WordPress, which is the most popular software for websites online and 25% of the, of the whole internet is popular. Uh, and, and a lot of people still probably think of WordPress as just a blog. Maybe you want to debunk that really quick and, and talk about how people are using WordPress. It's run by WordPress. And so just talking about them in theory, but actually talking about them and showing you step by step how to use those. And so we do this for free. Now, you can go to webcamp.cc and you can sign up. You'll see a little video of me on the screen telling you exactly how to do this. Uh, but you just simply go to webcamp.cc. I just put and the link in the up, chat. It's absolutely free, and it's there. Yeah, there's a there's a link. Frank just po uh, posted the link right there. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward, and uh, you know we do it for like I said, it's three full days. And the reason why I teach one subject for three full days is because uh, throughout those days, it's ninety minute sessions. It's a ninety minute session in the morning. Then we take a fifteen minute break <laughs> because even I need a break from talking. Right. Everybody does. So then uh, we come back and then we do another session. Then we break for an hour for lunch and then we come back and we do two sessions in the afternoon. So each day we're talking like six hours worth of training. It's pretty uh, that, intensive. Yeah, it's pretty intensive. We're, we would teach it, but every time we do, every other month we do a new one and it's always a new subject. Uh, so, and it's what people need, need to know. It could be, for example, on opt-in pages, it could be on lead generation, it could be on advertising, it could be on webinars, it could be on some skill that I think that everyone needs to know about in order to take their business to the next level based upon the current state of the internet as opposed to you know, what has happened. It doesn't really matter what happened three years ago. It's what's happening right now, what is going to happen in the future. For example, we're getting ready for 2016. Um, WordPress is just getting bigger. You know, Last year it was like 23, a little over 23% of the internet. The announcements were just made recently. Now it's 25% of the internet. Wow. WordPress just recently purchased uh, WooCommerce uh, for, I think it was 10 or 12, I think it was $12 million uh, that they purchased it for. Well, maybe it's more, I, I forget the numbers, except, but a lot of money. <laughs> and, right. uh, and that's gonna be part of their repertoire now, uh, as far as getting more and more people to- oh, integrate WooCommerce and make it simpler and easier to use. E-commerce section. And for those of you that don't know what WooCommerce is, it's a e-commerce software so you can run a shopping cart on your WordPress site. And it's free too. So, so yeah, I mean, what's happening nowadays on the internet is I think everyone needs to stay abreast of, but more importantly, we do these webcams every other month in order to provide that information and people can watch it absolutely free. They can see the whole thing and there's nothing left out. A lot of people think, well, if it's free, you're probably going <laughs> to leave something out. And that's not, what I've learned is that that scarcity mentality actually doesn't right. work. Yeah. Uh, you know, my thought is, if you, if I show you all these things, I'm showing you exactly, this is step by step. I'll actually show you my own website. There's nothing hidden. I'll, I actually show you if I'm talking about advertising, I log into my own Facebook account. I spend my own money. You see me spend it live in front of you. Uh, all these different things. So there's nothing hidden. Uh, and the reason why is because, yeah, there is a hidden agenda, if you will. If It's not really hidden. I'm very up upfront about it. Is that if you like what you see, then you, you might want to work with me. Right, you know, exactly. At, at and, some point and, in the future, you might want yeah, to drive develop a fuller relationship with you. And I, I yeah. think that's maybe a, um, a, a really deep misunderstanding among a lot of people just starting out, especially if they've never had a business background or experience. And, you know, maybe they've just, you know, had a small business or worked in a trade or a, a job their, their whole careers. And then they're trying to break into something entrepreneurial. So there's, there's this conceptual framework and you know, this is what you see in Hollywood and on TV that business yeah. people are evil, you know, geniuses trying to take over the world or whatever. But wow. when you go and, and start interacting in the world of business, you see a lot of people are out there and will bend over backwards to help you for no compensation at all. Like what you're doing with this web camp. I know, I mean, I've, I've followed a lot of the inter internet marketers like Frank Kern or Jeff Johnson and yeah. Ryan Dice, and they put out a ton of like high quality content for free. And I've learned so much just from watching some of the the, the free stuff. Uh, it's been extraordinary. Right. right. And, you know, and, and that's the thing is that, uh, you know, when you're not afraid of, uh, you know, I think that when I, when I was coming up a lot of, at a lot of the events, a lot of the seminars, uh, a lot of the, what I'd call old school marketers uh, would always say, 
uh, would, would show you something and then they'd always use phrases like, and in my course, I teach you exactly <laughs> how to blah, blah, blah. That was their method. That was their sure. strategy. Right. And, and, and I'd listen to it. It, it, it just, it'd make me cringe every time I'd hear that. Right. Uh, and so then I'd stand up and I'd, you know, go onto the stage and I'd be teaching people. And I just tell them, this is, this is what I did. This is how I did it. And look at, these are my stats. This is, let me log into my account. Let me, let me show you live right now what we did today. Right. And I'd log into my account and I'd show them all these different things. And, and people are like, you're, you're showing them too much. You're teaching them too much stuff. And I'm like, how could you do that? How can you teach someone too much? Right. Am I going to, if I, if, if I'm going to run out of information, <laughs> then maybe I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah. I was say, I've, I've been in business for 30 years now and I'm still learning every day because there's just so right. much to learn about every aspect of business. So sure. I don't think you're, you ever have to worry. And, and not, not to mention that, you know, the world is always changing the software, the technology is always changing. Right. So, yeah, I mean, look at, I mean, look, at, look, we're using this, this, this blab thing, right? Right. <laughs> and, yeah. Which and didn't this... exist uh, six months ago. Yeah, it didn't exist six months ago, a year ago, you know, it wasn't, you know, maybe it was just a thought and, uh, you know, the, the concept, the idea, I mean, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see more of uh, services like this, where it's this instant communication. Uh, you know, if you look at the quality of what we're having, I mean, it's better than Google Hangouts. I know that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've done Google uh, you know, 10 times, cool. 10 times better. <laughs> and so the technology is better. It's only going to get better exactly. as time goes this on. This is still beta. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's got. You can see the beta sign right there. <laughs> you know, that's. You know, what the beta means it means just. You know, if it messes up, well, that's our excuse that we're still in beta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I lived I'm through still a lot beta. of early beta versions of uh, technology from Microsoft and <laughs> that's right, Dell that's right. and Compaq and all that. Absolutely. So I want to talk about you know uh, your. You know, maybe some of your uh, other mentors, you me you mentioned people like Les Brown and uh, Charles Tremendous Jones and Napoleon Hill in in sort of, in terms of um, the Internet space. And you've been around longer than most, obviously. But who are right. some of the people that um, you follow that you've learned from? Obviously, you've shared the stage with a lot of great trainers, speakers and, and, and so forth. You know, when I started, uh, there wasn't anybody. So I had to make it up along the way. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends you know, that we start out, you know, along the same similar time frames. Um, you know, John Reese, you know, we start out about the same time. Frank Kern, we start out the same time. Ryan Dice first came to an event. <laughs> he was he was in college still when I first met him. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, he we, we became I don't even know how we became friends. We we created a piece of software together at one time and uh, we ultimately became friends over the, over the years. Jeff, John, for example, I mean, Jeff Johnson came to my first seminar. Um, he was still working at his job. Jeff Walker came to that very same seminar. He was still working his job at my very first big seminar that I ever did. Frank Kern uh, was actually in the audience at that very first big seminar that I did. Wow. Uh, John Reese was in the audience at the very first big seminar. Ryan Dice was not doing anything really on the internet at that very first big seminar that he came to that I did in Dallas, Texas. Um, so many people were in the audience, Joe Vitale were the, in the audience and everything. Wow. So as a hell of an so, audience you had there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are the people that were in the audience. These are not people speaking. No, no, I know. Uh, that's amazing. So now what, what's interesting. That, that's kudos to you, by the way. If, you know, I'm not saying that they learned everything from you, but to have those people start their careers and have done what they've done individually to have started with yeah, you I mean, speaks volumes for who you are and, you know, your, your capabilities as a teacher. Yeah, you know, you know, I with me, I think you have to think about I, the way I look at it is that you're always a student, right. no matter how you look at it. Um, you're always a student, and you're always learning from everybody. You know, do I watch what you know Frank Frank Kern's doing? Absolutely. Do I watch what Ryan's doing in a whole entirely different method? And I see the growth of his business as far as what he's doing him and Perry. Absolutely. You know, do I see all these different things? You know, I'm always watching, and I think you always have to be that student as far as watching what other people are doing. You have to know your industry. Yeah, you never know where the next great as, idea is going to come from. Yeah, because sometimes it's not trying to do what someone else is doing. Sometimes that sparks an idea in order for you to do it differently than than other people. Because, you know, I don't think anyone ever wants to just blatantly copy somebody. No. But what they want to do is they want to um, – Use that as an idea. And, and I think you just kind of be aware of what's happening in the industry. But I also think it's an evolution uh, as far as what you have currently. It's like the question is, 
uh, you know, I look at my own website. Uh, you know, for example, I, I was looking at my uh, my website. I was looking at the WebCamp website, odd, oddly enough, yesterday. And I was looking at it. I'm like, okay, well, this is fine. This is great. But then I looked at the affiliate program. I was like, oh, where does that link to? And then I'm like, okay, well, shouldn't I should change that? And so that sparked me to change the way that my affiliate signup page actually looks. Um, and so now I, the next step, I haven't had a chance to talk to my team today and I'm like, okay, well, let's change this. Let's, let's change the look and feel of this because I think it's going to make it more sense, uh, as far as how it happens. And so the question is, is that what you have is in a perfect world, what should change on it? And when you start looking at that perfect world scenario, as far as what you have, unless you have a hundred percent opt-in rate, unless you have a hundred percent sales rate, does, you should probably change what you're doing and still test yeah. uh, as far as what, what could improve. And no matter how good you are, uh, you're always going to have that level of improvement, no right. matter, no matter what it is. So er, the early, question is what can we do? Uh, early on, I was a, uh, I'd been exposed uh, by a friend to W. Edwards Deming work. And at the time I was actually enrolled as a student at NYU where he was yeah. still teaching. So sure. I was actually fortunate enough that I got to, go in and I audited a couple of his uh, classes on uh, total quality management. And that was, sure. was, you know, a huge, what he was all about was constant, never ending Im improvement. It, it was just continuous improvement. It was something that he drilled in. And at the time he was in his nineties and, right. you know, kind of a, a, a fragile man when he, when he kind of walked into the room, but sure. when that man stood up and started you know, talking about his 14 principles right. and, you know, constant never ending improvement and it's up to the manager and you've got to measure everything. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, that you know, man came to life like you couldn't believe for somebody who was, I think, 92 at the time. Well, you know, what, what's amazing is that, you know, so many times the internet marketing world takes things from the offline world. Uh, you know, just talking about, you know, quality and quality management and things of that nature is the, the idea of split testing. Right. Um, was at first was really a simple A B split test. Make one change here, you know. Here's the here's the original, and make one change. Let's see which one works best. Yeah, that's like copywriting one hundred and one from like going back to you know Joe Sugarman or going back to uh, some of some of the old mentors from the twenties and thirties. But what happens is we stole this whole method and this whole technology from the car manufacturing industry, and it was called the Taguchi method, and okay. the, the Taguchi method method allowed us to test not just one variable, but test six variables at the same time. All and right. to see which one, not only which one worked on a split test variation, but which test, which one changed on a, a multivariate uh, scenario. Now in multivariate scenario, we can test multiple combinations to see which one's actually gonna work. Now, the reason why this method was developed was because the car industry would, wouldn't know which pieces, which combination of parts would work best together. And they needed to, figure out a way mathematically to discover which combination would work well. And so someone had this idea uh, that this would apply towards the internet. And so there was a couple different pieces. We actually ended up making a piece of software that was 20,000 lines of code that would take the Taguchi method and apply it towards a website. Uh, and now actually Google uses a very similar technology in their Google experiments when you split test a website. That's how you can test multiple variations uh, as you as you test things. Uh, so a lot of the off techniques that we use online are absolutely stolen, ripped off from right. offline uh, businesses and offline marketing techniques and strategies. You know, it's like I, f I forget who the quote was by, but uh, a very famous quote, which is plagiarize, plagiarize. Why don't you use your eyes? <laughs> All the information <laughs> is out there, you know, <laughs> grab right. it, readapt it, use it. If it works, you know, make it work for your business, whatever it might be. Well, you know, here's the interesting part. When you're talking about marketing and we're talking online with banner advertising, when we're talking about uh, any kind of advertising to begin with pop-ups as an example, uh, different variations of the pop-up when it first originated. Oddly enough, the direct marketing industry, the internet marketing industry, actually, and you're just kind of funny, really, uh, stole it from the porn industry. Um, <laughs> well, porn and, was the, the number one business on the internet for most of its life. Yeah, it even when it was in, the very, in, in its infancy, um, what happened is that the, the people that were the programmers, the web designers in the porn industry actually were some of the top marketers, period, uh, as far as the technology that they were using. And they were absolutely cutting edge uh, as far as the strategies in order to grab a person's attention. And so the direct marketing industry, the internet marketing industry, 
uh, you know, different pieces, different people will tell you different stories about how they took the idea of a pop up, how they took different scenarios right. from actual scripts. There used to be actually a website for scripts that were direct was directly for the porn industry <laughs> that used to actually go to grab scripts to put on your website. Oddly enough, uh, it, it, that's just how it worked. Go figure. Um, people, uh, people like sex. So sex. Sells. Yeah, well, well, we didn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> But you, uh, but you, but you had the idea was the concept as far as what it is, and and, and what and, and basically what I'm saying is just that evolution of all the different things that are happening, even to this very day. Um, what is happening, for example, here with the, with, for example, with Blab or or you know you you have people using Slack now. Um, you know we use things like HipChat, you know, for instant communication within my team. We use you know all kinds of different tools in order so to make our lives easier. Put those um, in the chat for people. So it's Slack.com. Yeah, Slack.com. I mean, that, it's it's a very similar instant messaging application um, that a lot of different groups are using. Another uh, tool that we use is HipChat. Is HipChat.com. That's what I use personally within my team uh, in order for us to communicate because I don't want to use instant messengers because they're annoying. Uh, but I want my team to be able to communicate instantly. And, and so we use HipChat in order to do all of that. In fact, I have it running right now. And there's my team's actually talking back and forth, you know, even as we uh, as we talk right now. So they're they're doing everything. They're kind of continuing their thing. But because email is inefficient. But right. until someone comes up with a better alternative, which I believe that these instant alternatives are are definitely going to be what, what's happening. I mean, we don't want to talk to people necessarily all the time. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> we want this instant messenger type of capability. Uh, and that's what Slack is. That's what HipChat is. And I think you're going to see more and more of that actually coming to fruition as time goes on. What um, what are you most excited about in terms of technology that you see coming down the pipeline? I mean, obviously, we're, we're on this brand new platform here. Who knows if, if it'll yeah. be op obsolete in another six months or have blown up to to like Twitter. But is there something that you see that you use in your business that nobody else is using mm. yet that you see it's it's about to explode? Well, I think we use, you know, we probably use more than so than anybody else is probably live stream. Um, you know, which is, you know, being able to stream just like this, very similar. Uh, we use it for all of our streaming capabilities. For example, with WebCamp as an example, uh, we use live stream. We have a high-end internet connection coming into my house and we stream in actually HD quality. So you can actually, it looks just like you're watching TV. Livestream.com? Uh, so I think live stream, yeah, livestream.com. I mean, Facebook uses live stream as an example when they do their big streaming events and things of that nature. So I figure if it's good enough for Facebook, it's probably sure. good enough for me. Uh, it's probably not going to crap out too often. Uh, every once in a while it does, but very, very rarely. Uh, but anyways, the reason why I say that is because the whole idea of being able to have that live experience uh, from home is absolutely huge. So I think that you know, for example, uh, a lot of people do webinars and I, I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate of webinars. Uh, but having a, a conversation and seeing us live like this is 10 times, 10 times better than watching a webinar where you're just watching a, a PowerPoint as an example. Right. Uh, so when you, I think as we go forward, what's going to happen is you're going to see uh, more and more people get in front of a camera. So I, for example, I was watching a podcast the other day, I was doing some research and I was making my plans going forward in 2016. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to, I'm going to get rid of what we were doing as far as podcasting wise. Uh, and I actually put in a request to remove all previous podcasts on Apple because I'm like, okay, that's, I don't want that. I want to start fresh. I want to start new. Right. So, uh, and I, I'm thought, okay, do I, do I do a video podcast or should I do an audio podcast? And I talked to a couple different people and they're like, ah, oh, well, you got one, one half says video, one half says audio. And then, uh, Michael Hyatt, uh, had this uh, great scenario. I watched and I, I went on iTunes and he has a video podcast and he has the audio podcast. I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. And then, you know, you have uh, YouTube as well, too. You've got, you know, then you've got SoundCloud and you've got all these different services that you don't know which one you should do. But here's my point, though, is that the more your audience, if if you are the brand, so to say, the if you the more your audience sees you, that can see the nuances, that can see you, uh, your facial expressions, your hand motions, right. the better off they're going to be, the closer connection that you're going to have to these people. So as we go forward, this whole idea of social media is going to be more social. 
it, the more you that you can input into the whole process, the better it's going to be. So people do want to see you. People do want that reaction. And so I think that uh, for us, you know, what I'm looking at and what I'm looking going forward is to create more of a television show type of, I guess you'd say, I don't know, a persona, so to say. I guess that's sure. maybe the right yeah, word. Yeah, like a, a personality. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much a, it's not so much a personality though, uh, because it is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to tell stupid jokes. I'm, it, it is what it is. But uh, but it's just that uh, what we're looking at is uh, Stephen. Let me see, Stephen. That's Stephen Colbert. It was John Oliver. John Oliver. Right. Yeah, John Oliver has a show. If you go into YouTube and type in John Oliver, you'll find that the John Oliver show. And uh, I was watching that show one day, and I and I and what's interesting is that he's not in front of an audience. And I thought that's really really interesting. And he doesn't get up, and he's at a desk only. And I thought, hmm, that's pretty interesting too. And it's a very high quality show with a very high quality set behind him as well too. And, and of course, he's a you know a very much a big name. But I, I started looking at that. I'm like, oh man, that is brilliant. And I thought, if you can have that type of quality, imagine that quality in the, for lack of a better word, internet marketing space. Okay, sure, right. You would blow everyone else away. You you would absolutely blow everyone else away from quality, and that is what we're looking at. And that's the, the direction that we're looking at is to have more. Oddly enough, and I hate to, because it sounds really bad when you say it this way, more me out there. <laughs> well, I want to, it's kind of cocky, doesn't it? <laughs> what you were saying about Michael Hyatt saying, you know, j just do both. You know, you've got to consider who is your audience and how are they going to connect with you? Because everyone's got a different learning style and everyone's got yeah. a different schedule. So for some people, a podcast, if they're riding a train, for for a commute is a lot more convenient than trying to watch a video and won't drain your battery as much as a video. Right. Other people uh, might be more visual learners, so they need to see the expression on your face. But that's they, but that's the beauty of Michael's is, is if you listen to his right, right. What he what he and I, I checked this because I thought he was doing this, and uh, it was very very interesting because he does the video podcast first, and then he just takes the audio from the video podcast, puts it into the audio podcast, right, which is fine. Which is beautiful. I mean, right. I, you know, it, it's it is just smart. It is just smart the way you did it. You, you lose information for a visual person because you're not going to get the expressions. But the auditory person, the person who, who just wants to hear exactly. the information, isn't going to care about that. They just want to stick in their earbuds and listen to it on the train. Yep. Or pop, pop it into their car, or whatever it might be, exactly. and hear it as they're driving or while, while they're doing whatever else they're doing. Yep. So yeah. in consideration of you know, if if your business, you're in the business of training. Okay. Sure. You've got to consider. How do people learn? Yep. So people learn, you know, visually, auditorily, kinesthetically, you know, by doing. And there's some people who, you know, prefer a book or an ebook or an article. Yeah. Some people prefer to have the, you know, the the diagrams laid out so they can, you know, digitally follow step by step by step. And I think, but, you know, I think what it is is what you're trying to do. You know, what is the end objective? So, for example, I mean, there's a certain objective with a podcast. Uh, there's a certain whether it be video or audio. You know, there, you have a certain objective, you're building a following, you're building an audience, so to say. Um, same thing with the YouTube, you know, YouTube channel, same thing with SoundCloud, same thing with whatever medium that you choose. You know, even this, I mean, I, I think Blab is a great medium uh, as far as building a brand because they're seeing you. I mean, for example, right. I mean, they both of us right now on the screen uh, and, you know, and everything else. I, you know, the only thing I wish that they would probably do on this is if they, they'd have widescreen. You know, why, why do they put you in a square? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know why they limit it to just four. I mean, I would you know, definitely see possibilities where you could benefit from having six or eight, although it gets smaller. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's what their intentions are in the future. Yeah, maybe that's like what they'll the, charge for. Yeah, the Twitter uh, mentality of 140 characters, you know, work with right. it. And let's see what we can create or, uh, or what's the, uh, the vine where it's like six second videos. <laughs> right. Here's six seconds. What can you do? I just have to do 40 videos. <laughs> Hi, my name is Omar, and then I go to the next video. <laughs> <laughs> the first, oh, I'm out. <laughs> part <Dang> one. <laughs> so I want to um, talk talk about you know you mentioned earlier that you're planning out for your next year, and I saw that you're yeah. you're starting to promote the Learning University. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the difference between what you're doing and trying to accomplish with Web WebCamp with what you're uh, objectives are and, and yeah. the audience for uh, learning university. Great question. 
Um, you know, with WebCamp, you know, like I said, it's a it's a free training that we do, and um, it happens every other month, right? And it's uh, it's like a live event, but it, it, like I said, it's free, and it's three full days. Now, Learn University is our actual live event where people actually get out of their house, <laughs> they actually socialize with other people. And <laughs> now, the reason why we did this now for you know, for for years and years and years, I. Uh, you know, I ran the big seminar, which was at one time the the longest running internet marketing seminar in the world. And uh, many, many people got their start there. And we were fortunate enough to train literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all over the world. And it was really cool. And in 2010, you know, the industry was changing. Uh, and I thought, this is it. I'm done. And, uh, you know, I don't want to play anymore. So we shut down. And I then started doing my own events, which was just me, me for three days. And we did, we're doing four events all over the world, two in the United States, one in the UK, one in Australia, and it worked great. And then, you know, what happens is I start thinking about the industry as it is, the seminar industry, the internet marketing industry. And I looked at what events were going on. I saw, yeah, Ryan's event. I see, you know, Jeff Walker's events. I see different people's doing different events and they all have their place. And I thought that there's an opening, if you will, for a different kind of event, a higher, uh, a higher level event to some degree. I, I, I say that because I don't want to you know, downgrade other people's events, but I'm, I'm saying that there's a, a place here. For example, the, the quality of our events, the way we do it, the branding of our event is, unpheno- is phenomenal. When you, when you actually get to the event, it, it's absolutely phenomenal as far as what we've done, as far as the branding of it goes. Uh, and uh, the other part is, is that the one thing that I have that a lot of people don't is connections. Uh, with people. So for example, at my last event, I had Russell Brunson, I had Mike Phil same. Uh, I had Matt Basic, I had uh, James Malinchek, who's on The Secret Millionaire. I had, um, you know, Greg Caesar, I had Ty Cohen, I had all these different people. I, I know a lot of people. Um, sure. And, you know, over the years, we became good friends. And just, I'm lucky the fact that a lot of my friends are just happen to be well-known marketers. <laughs> so <laughs> so business it, you're in and you've been in it from, from inception. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is we have a lot of things in common. That's why we became friends, right? Uh, so, you know, I can pull that resource that they have great information, great content to share with people. Um, and so I can pick up the phone, call them. And if they're available, they can come and teach people for three full days at this event. Now, and, and again, this is a live event. So, for example, our next event's in Los Angeles. Um, and at that event, we're, we've got some people. I can't really announce who the lineup is yet. But there's some really big names that we're bringing to the table. And again, what I'm looking at is what is it that people need to learn right now? And the next question is who is the best, who is the best in the world at that subject? And so now can I get, get that person? That's the question. And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes maybe I know them, which is I'm lucky and other questions. Maybe I don't know them that well, but we may know of each other and that, I'm able to use that a little bit to my advantage. Or maybe you know uh, so, somebody in your network who knows them and, you know, six pretty much. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge people that I know, we, you, you kind of tend to know everybody through, you know, six degrees of separation, exactly. so to say. So I can get into I can introduce those people uh, and, and we can have a great time. Now at the event, you know, we have a lot of things that we do that are fun. Uh, because I believe in playing hard and I also believe in working extremely hard, but I also believe in playing hard as well too. So we have like, you know, parties on Friday night, we have parties on, on Saturday night, uh, networking parties specifically. So you can actually meet other people in the room. You know, the, the, where I, the, what, what happened to me is before I met anyone else in the internet marketing world, my business was already doing probably three quarters of a million dollars a year. I, I was a one person operation. Uh, I didn't know a single person online. Uh, other than me, right? So I went to my first event that was going on and I happened to meet some people. At that first event, I met uh, Marlon Sanders. I met Kurt Christensen. I met David Ledoux, Joel Christopher, Ted Siuba, and a bunch, bunch of other people that you know became my friends over the years. And uh, it, was, it was fantastic. Now, as a result of going to that event and a few other events shortly after, my $750,000 year income actually tripled almost instantly. Because, yeah, we started doing things like joint ventures. You know, we started, you know, talking to other people. We started expanding our circle of influence uh, even more. I got invited to speak at a lot of different events. And so that 
you know, helped us in so many different ways. But the point is that I went to that first event as an attendee. I went to that first event as right. a person that wanted to, you know, find out what else was going on. Now, I went to two events and then I started doing my own events. <laughs> so maybe that's kind of how it happened. <laughs> yeah, well, because good I'm like, that's because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can, I can do this better. <laughs> exactly, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can do this better, and let's just do it. So, uh, but what happened was, is it it introduced me to a lot of people, and now. We do events all over now. Learn University, we're doing in Los Angeles. Then we're doing one in Australia. Um, and then we're probably going to end up doing one in the UK as well, too. So, um, but these are live events because there, there's no, no matter how great the internet, no matter how great it is, me and you talking right now and having this conversation, the one thing that you can never replace is live human interaction. You can't replace shaking someone's hand you can't replace Absolutely. hugging a friend you can't replace having dinner across from people and you can't you can't replace that 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 interaction that that you just naturally have in in talking to people and the internet's a fantastic place and, and it's i love the whole virtual world it's fantastic but i also understand that there's a needs a place for people to group together and commune if you will absolutely i mean i've I've been a networker for, you know, I've made that a priority in in my career after reading Harvey McKay's book, How to Swim with the Sharks. And he was a big sure. uh, networker. I don't know if you've read his books, but uh, yeah. I said, you know what, this is a skill I've got to master and, and really set out to master. And I built my whole, you know, company or companies from, you know, networking. And a lot of that's going to live events where you don't know anybody, right. pressing, the, pressing the flesh and starting to find out, you know, yep. how can I add value to this person or, you know, um, is is there a reason to to continue the the conversation, or should we both move move in a different direction here? Yeah, it's kind of funny you mentioned Harvey McKay. You know, the coolest part about building a business and and doing things is uh, you get some perks, <laughs> and right. so uh, and you get people to introduce you to different people. Of course, just kind of happening along the way. But just the fact that you mentioned Harvey McKay, I, I got Harvey McKay's book, and in the inside of the book it says, "Thanks, Armand, for all your help, Harvey McKay." Nice. And, I mean, is that, I mean, just kind of cool, cool thing. That's fantastic. You know, cool, cool stuff like that. But it just happens as as you build your business. But you know, I, I think it's just a matter of networking and finding people. And I think it's there's sometimes. I don't think you need to do it all the time, but I think there's certain times that you need to meet together. Uh, and I think Learn University has a place uh, in the world. I think it has a place that we're going to take it. We're going to build it. We're putting a not only a lot of time we're putting a lot of money into it we're putting a lot of energy into it and we're building it as a brand and i think as it evolves um you're going to see some you know really good things from it uh we had a great our first event uh we just had uh in the no, beginning of november um and we've already got the second one planned actually i had the second one planned before the end of the first one um nice. so we have, so what, what now is the website somebody's asking i just put it into the chat it's learninguniversity.com just learn university learn university.com and people can go there and opt yeah, in you can get, you can opt in to find out when we have the next learn university coming up um yeah, it sh shows the dates uh that we have there uh and we're going to be announcing probably over the course of the next week or so uh the lineup as far as who's going to be speaking there um, some really cool people that have tentatively said yes. Uh, I can't really say who they are until until I know for sure because I, I've got burned so many times. <laughs> so I want to I like, putting like, events you know, together is always a challenge. You know, you know, it's really kind of funny when I sent out the emails uh, for the the very first Learn University to ask for speakers. My email basically said this: this word for word, dude. I'm putting the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> Blues Brothers. I love it. <laughs> that, that, was the, from God. that was the email that I sent to everybody. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, you know, you want to speak? Do you want to come and play? <laughs> that, was, that, was the that was how I put it. And I, I just it. read it. So but, uh, I've, had, I've had you on here for a little over an hour. I want to respect your time. I don't know if you've got things to do. And I know in about three minutes, my son is going to interrupt this. So sure. I may have to step out, but is there anything that you'd like to talk about or what, what is your limit on time? Um, you know, we got a little bit, a little bit of time, you know, you know, okay. you know, 10, 10 minutes or so. All right. Is there anything, um, you know, um, let me ask you this. I just watched Simon yeah. Sinek. He was on an interview, his first interview on Blab yesterday, and he talks about start with why. So, yeah. you know, what is, what is your purpose in, in developing these, these training seminars? What is your ultimate 
you know, what drives you? What 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 is you know the outcome that you want to see at, at the end of all your work, of, at the end of your life? That you know what I lived my purpose and 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 I helped all these people, but this is what I accomplished with my life. What was your purpose? You know, I think it's a great question. You know, it's one that you know I think about a lot. You know, why am I doing all this? You know, why, why am I doing all this? I mean, honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys right now. I can quit. I can quit. Take all my products offline. And I'd be perfectly happy and have a considerable income coming in without selling another thing, period. Um, but that's not me, first of all. <laughs> it's not challenging. Uh, but more so than that, I like seeing people succeed. I, I like it to the nth degree uh, as far as seeing people achieve. You know, uh, you know, so many times I, I, I see things and, I, and, it, and it makes me, I don't know, it, it makes me happy to see people, what I call, achieve greatness. And the reason I say that is because greatness, when I use the term greatness, it's a term for people succeeding. It's a term for people winning. It's a, ter a term for people achieving what it is that they want to achieve. And so when I say achieving greatness, it, it could be someone making their first dollar. It could be someone achieving financial freedom. It could be someone achieving, you know, just their own version of success. And maybe it's just getting that three, four, five hundred bucks to make the car payment. Maybe, maybe it's you know starting that barber shop. Maybe right, exactly. it, it is doing. Everyone has a different level of success. No one wants what I want, and I don't want what they want. But what I like about is that I've in, in the last twenty years I've been able to achieve a certain skill set. I've been able to achieve and learn and understand how a certain part of the world works, particularly the internet. And I can share that knowledge with other people and then they can build their dreams to what they want to want, want to achieve. And I think ultimately the end goal with, you know, why do I do Learn University? Why do I do WebCamp is I want to help people. You know, some people say, well, I want to help a thousand people become millionaires. Well, if that's what you want, fantastic. You know, I've helped create multiple, multiple millionaires worldwide in so many different markets and so many different areas. I have that students was doing Three hundred uh, million Robert dollars. Robert tagline for a little while. He wanted to create a thousand millionaires in three years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if that's your goal, that that's your goal. For me, I like seeing people succeed. I like see, seeing people achieve greatness. And I think that with WebCam, I think with the training programs that we have, I think with Learn University, it allows me to a have fun because I like having fun. Uh, it allows me to help people get to where they want to be. It allows people to create an experience because. The bigger part to all of this, it's not just uh, a virtual world anymore. It, it is an experience. It's an experiential aspect of, of your business where we can interact with other people. We can help them get to where they want to be, and we can do it in a way that uh, I think makes the most sense. Because, for example, with Learn University, you know, the one system that has never failed uh, as far as learning has been live training, period. I mean... If, if you if think about this, how many people have you ever known that said, I became a millionaire by reading an ebook? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> you know, I've, I became a millionaire by joining a membership site. Maybe, maybe a couple, may, maybe. But if, if you ask how many people have become millionaires by learning live in front of another individual in some way, shape or form, the numbers are countless. And, and that's the method that we chose to go with Learn University. WebCamp fits a need, fits a want. It helps you get the training and information that you need, helps you introduce you to what we have, uh, helps introduce you to the processes that are necessary right now in order to build your business. Learn University takes it to another step. And then we have other programs along the way. But for me, I like seeing people achieve greatness. I, you know, I do have that tier when I ha see that person that has struggled their whole life make that first dollar. I do have that... Uh, you know, that, that, that sniffling feeling when I, I see someone just be able to maybe buy their first brand new car. You know, my dad for years and years um, was never had a brand new car in his whole life. And, uh, you know, he, to see him get his first brand new, he didn't want my help. Now I bought my dad a car, I bought my dad a house, I bought my mom and dad, all kinds of things. The funny part is actually Google did because I was making a lot of money with Google and I bought them a brand new house with one month's Google check. But uh, that's a whole other nice. story. <laughs> but awesome. but the point being is, but to see someone you know achieve something that they've uh, always wanted to do uh, and get that brand new car for the first time, you know, uh, or get a, a new house, or just to get a little bigger house than maybe the, what they have, or just to be comfortable. Uh, that's that's what I do it for, and I, that's what I like.
Achieving that's greatness. That's fantastic. That's, you know, hit you right in here in the heart. That's great. So what you, you mentioned, you like to have fun. Okay. I want to think, yeah. you know, what, what, are, what's fun to you? What are some of like your, your hobbies, adventures, journeys, uh, explorations? What is it? Uh, that, that you're going to, you're, you're going to laugh. That's fun for you. You're going to laugh actually. Um, for me, I spend most of my time. In fact, I came right from, tr I came from training directly to this lab. And uh, here's what I mean is uh, what a lot of people don't know. I talk about it a little bit every now and then, but I, uh, I train in Taekwondo. Oh, and, nice. Fantastic. Uh, at a very high, high level. Um, you know, I uh, took second in the nationals last year in two different divisions. I'm uh, competing for the U.S. Open. I competed in the Korean uh, Open Championships, took wow. third. Uh, and, um, now we're getting ready to do a bunch of different training. So I actually travel all over the world, uh, competing in Taekwondo. 10, 10 seconds. That's my son at the door. Oh, Hold that's on. okay. So for, for those of you watching again, uh, you know, for me, it's, you know, reaching it. I don't know about you guys, but you know, you reach that time in your life where a lot of times you have that midlife crisis. Uh, for me, I didn't have a midlife crisis. So what I had was I had a fitness crisis. Now, what do I mean by a fitness crisis? Well, you wake up one day and you realize, hey, um, you're out of shape. You need to do something. And so that's where I was, you know, two years ago is uh, I realized that I was out of shape and needed to do something about it. Sorry so about that. I, I was just kind of filling everyone in is that I was telling everyone about that. I had a instead of a midlife crisis, I had a fitness crisis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of going and, through that myself right now. <laughs> yeah. And so what happened was uh, two years ago, uh, I, you know, kind of woke up I figured I needed to do something. My wife, my daughter was taking Taekwondo lessons and I decided, Hey, I think I'll do it myself. Now, when I was younger, uh, from the time I was 12 to the time I was 23, I actually actively competed in martial arts. Uh, I was in black belt magazine. I was in all these different things. Uh, and, uh, as my business started to grow and as I started working for a living, what happened was everything stopped and my body got, you know, very sedentary. <laughs> it, it started gaining weight in places it shouldn't be gaining weight. Yeah. Right? When you're sitting in front of a computer all day, exactly. it's not a good recipe for, uh, for fitness. So, and at the time, you know, I had, I picked up some bad habits. I had smoked. Uh, and in fact, uh, now it's almost two years since I quit smoking. Oh, congratulations. Uh, so, that makes yeah. me feel very happy because that's one of my real pet peeves. My, I had two grandfathers who smoked and right. chain smoked and died from it. My uh, uh, uncles who smoked a lot yeah. and it's killing them. So uh, Yeah, I mean, so what happened was, you know, as a result of me quitting smoking, some things happened physically within my body. My blood pressure shot up for the first time ever in my life. My sugar had shot up for the first time ever in my life. But what happened was I discovered that the more I worked out, the more I trained, the, uh, the less medication I needed. And so now I don't take any blood pressure medication. I don't take any you know, sugar medication or anything like that. It's all controlled just by the amount of, that I actually work out. Um, and so I, I, I work out every day in order to you know, compete. And for me, competing is just one of those things that I like doing. <laughs> it's, it, it gives me a goal. Uh, in order to compete. And um, it's fun in a very demented way. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it also, the, the, the physical exercise, especially for something like the martial arts, number one, martial arts is one of the few um, exercises that simultaneously exercises both right and hemisphere of the brain. Okay. There's a few different yeah. things like that. G gymnastics, whole body exercises that yeah. are both right and left brain. Number two, it gives you like a space to, just focus yes and 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 not think about business and problems in the day to day right and number and, you know in, not, in, number three it gives you that stamina to get through the day because now when you've got fit i was just reading this and i, I forget in a, a book just as a business strategy if you want to yeah. be like a, a a top you know successful business person you've got to have physical stamina if you're in sure. uh, doing like big deals and you're in an all night negotiation with the japanese or, or chinese and they're trying to wear you out if you've right. got more physical stamina you're going to win okay yeah so, so just I mean, from a, that point of view it's it's a very useful thing to to do well with me it's a it's a challenge because you're not competing with anybody else um, you're competing against yourself really right is exactly. you're trying to make your body do something that in some cases 
uh, you know, the effects, you know, you know, you, you hear these articles and you read these articles about the effects of sitting. Um, and, yeah, you know, really smoking. you never really think about this, but I'm going to tell you right now, the hip flexors on the front of my legs, um, it's taken me two years to try to release the muscle and the tendons to allow them to do what I want them to do ultimately. Right. Um, it, are, I mean, are you familiar with Donnie Epstein's work? No, I can't say that I am. You should, you should Google him. I'll send you the link. But uh... yeah, I mean, it, it's just really amazing. I mean, um, you know, the changes that happen in your body. I mean, even to this day, I mean, you know, over the literally over the weekend, you know, there's been certain changes that happen in my body, my legs, the flexibility aspects uh, that, you know, you force yourself into. And so, for again, for me, it's a it's not just, you know, it's it's it 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 pushes me and it, it forces me to push me on and you know in some ways you know my my wife laughs because she's she always says I, if, uh, that I'm going to go play with my my new friends right <laughs> and the reason yeah, why I've, is because, I've heard that kind of a comment from my wife I I, I hear you well the, the reason the reason why I say that is because my uh, the oldest person at, at the school where I'm at is like 26. Right, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like twice. I'm I'm literally could be the father of every one of these people <laughs> of uh, that are there. And so, but it, for me, it it kind of makes me, you know, kind of stay in touch. Me, if you want to think about, it, it makes me young. If in in some way, uh, it, it brings back certain memories, certainly, but it also forces me to try to push myself beyond uh, what I'm physically capable of. And I think in the back of our minds, I think to some degree, many of us still think that we're Superman. <laughs> and uh and my, my and, last and name this, is clark you don't have to tell me twice <laughs> that's right there you go <laughs> so but this for me it helps me push in the right direction it helps me get going um it helps me focus it helps me uh, get in shape and it's a challenge and you know with that coupled with you know <clears throat> of course just like many people trying to lose weight and things of that nature you know it works out pretty well but it's, it's also putting you into an environment with other like-minded people who are doing the very same positive thing. My, uh, you know, my kind of journey getting back into shape here started about a year and a half ago with a friend who invited me to go hiking. And I love to hike, but I'd stopped doing it as much, you know, since yeah. my son came along and I just wasn't getting up to the woods as much as I would like. So right. it's like, OK, we got to get up there, at, you know, at sunrise, yeah. which I'm, I'm, I'm not so fond of. But so we've been going for about a year and a half now at uh he calls it the uh, Civil Twilight Hiking Club, and there's two members, him and me. <laughs> right, <laughs> we, right. We get on the uh, on, on the mountain, you know, 10, 20 minutes before sunrise, and there's nobody right. else there. So it's sure. just a very peaceful, serene kind of a thing. But we're going up big elevations and sure. uh, getting the heart going or whatever. And then we just have these amazing conversations. I, I, I've told him, I'm like, I got to get you on Blab and, <laughs> and have some of these conversations in front of other people because they're – and he's, he's a very, he's a PhD in physics and he's a brilliant guy, but we oh, have yeah. these incredible conversations about all types of topics. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, we go, I go on this hike every month, right. And it's to test, it's really to test how uh, I am physically. That's the whole purpose. And so it's just me and, 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 and my instructor, um, she was, you know, he's Korean and, uh, you know, he talks in broken English. And uh, so some of the, half the struggle is trying to understand what we're both saying to each other. Uh, but, but, he, but he's also been training in, in Taekwondo since he was five years old Wow! Uh, in a very old school type of methodology. And he is world champion multiple times over and over again. Um, but it, it's just really interesting the conversations that you have. But the first time that he takes me on this hike, we went with a few other people right. and it was it was all of a sudden. He says, uh, I said, well, how far is it? He says, you want to go hiking with us? I said, yeah, sure, it depends. I said, well, how far is it? He said, ah, it's only like a mile or so. And I'm like, well, I can I can probably do a mile. So then next time I see him, he says, well, maybe it's like two miles or so. And so <laughs> so now, now, again, I've never really gone hiking. I mean, I've gone maybe once or twice in my life, right? And so then all of a sudden he says, uh, I get there. And he, and he says, well, it's probably like three probably like three or so. So then we start walking on this and I start realizing it's not three miles, right? It's seven and a half miles, right? And and it's up hills that I don't want to look up. I, I, I don't want to go on, right? But I'm halfway into this now, three and a half miles. I have no choice. I got to walk three, you know, three plus miles back. Get out, in, exactly. In, in order to get out of there. And my I'm dying. You know, the next day, the first time I did this, the next day, I literally rolled out of bed and just hobbled. 
uh, because right, of my you're using muscle groups that you're not used to using oh, my calves are just dying and I, it took me two weeks to get over it and then the next time it was a little bit better the next time you know i wasn't sore at all the next time now i'm you know increasing like the first time i took 30 minutes off my time the next time we took another 15 minutes off my time the next time and so now we're timing it each and every time and the last time we went um I, he was holding me back <laughs> and, and at, <laughs> at, nice. at that point he's like he's holding me back i'm like dude let's, let's come on let's go <laughs> and but it, it's fun you know and, it, and again it's you know you have these conversations and he's you know he's telling me these crazy stories about training in korea and he's saying oh they for when he was a kid and like 12 years old they'd take him up onto a mountain and they'd leave him there overnight with nothing but a chocolate bar and some cheese <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like what is the purpose of this and he said well we just go up the mountain and we have to survive for you know 48 hours it's training and, and resourcefulness and i'm like oh my gosh i mean it's pretty amazing it's pretty it's kind of funny so i mean but you know like i said for me it's fun for me i have a good time doing it and uh and, and more so uh, it keeps me out of my my wife's hair <laughs> <laughs> always a plus right? for That's both right. of you i'm sure <laughs> you need to get a time but you need that separate time too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I want to uh, close this out. I guess at this point, we've been on for about 90 minutes, and I've really thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. And thank you so much uh, to you, Armand, for your generosity and sharing with people, um, you know, so, sort of your story and, and then some of the programs mm -hmm. that you've got. Thank you also for the, um, uh, for the web camp that's coming up. So that's December 11th, 12th, and 13th. Yes. Three days yep. of free training in WordPress with unbelievable teacher who's been doing this for 20 years right yep 20 years and it's uh you know it's gonna be again this next web camp's gonna be some of the latest information a lot of things change about wordpress lately and we're gonna be sharing with you exactly what we're doing and the exact tools and strategies that we use oh that's fantastic and then you're going to be doing some doing this web camp every month with new types of technologies right. and other types of things so that sounds Absolutely. like a, a no-brainer for anybody who's listening or interested in this get on the web camp thing and uh, you know, become a customer, right? Absolutely. And then secondly, the Learn University, uh, it's in the in the comments, learnuniversity.com, a live event uh, three times a year in LA, Australia, and a third one planned in uh, the UK, I think you said? Yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe in the UK. Twice, okay. Twice in the US, twice in the US right now, and once in Australia so far. So twi <laughs> twice in the US, what were the, both in LA or? Well, we're doing next one in LA. We don't know where the next one is going to be after that, but we we typically go East Coast, West Coast. That's our typical strategy. Gotcha. So I'm in New York. Let me know if you're coming out our our way here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm originally from New York. Oh, are you? Where Where'd you grow up? I'm actually. I grew up upstate New York, though. Well, fact, that's a big. <laughs> I grew up yeah. in upstate New York too, but that's a big uh, <laughs> place. Oh, where upstate? I grew up in Poughkeepsie, in Dutchess County. Ah, see, I that, you know I went to school in Poughkeepsie. Oh, did you remember Marist or Vassar? I went to Marist. I went Marist, to Marist College. My, my brother went there. I lived on, on 55 Clinton Street. Okay, I know where Clinton Street is. It's not, not such a very good neighborhood, neighborhood over there. It's not a great neighborhood. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I. That's where my first place. Guy got shot the first day I was there. Uh, but, yeah. Um, well, I went. I, I went to Fordham in the Bronx. So. <laughs> ah, so I know that. We, we had shootings. We had a girl who lost her. One of the students lost her eye from a random shooting. The, uh, uh, but I grew up actually upstate New York in a place called Messina, New York, which is at the very top of the state, up by 60 minutes south of Montreal. Okay, Pl uh, Plattsburgh area. Plats go to Plattsburgh, take a left. Gotcha. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so, but again, I appreciate very much that you having me here. I mean, I have a lot of fun. I you know, hope uh, you know, I was able to help all uh, the people watching, and and uh, you know, you know, we're going to be here for a, a long time, hopefully, and uh, you know, we're going to keep on doing it while it's uh, still fun. And I'm in the process of organizing a, a startup conference here on Blab. I'd love for you to be a part of that and join us. And I'll uh, reach out to you by email separately yeah. to, to talk about that. And that, that might be Absolutely. coming up uh, relatively quickly. So sounds great. I'll reach out to you on that. So once again, thank you so much, Armand uh, Morin. Uh, please go to his websites to uh, the web camp and Learn University to learn more about what he does and how he's doing it. So it's webcamp.cc and learnuniversity.com. And thank you all very much for listening and watching either uh, live or on replay. I will be on again on Monday with another uh, interview, another business interview, and look forward to seeing more of you guys out here on Blab.
and I'm going to stop the recording.